Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 166. That's right, life is a highway. I want to ride it all night long. Folks, joining me this week, fresh escapee from Florida itself, it is Kyle Bailey. I'm back, and I got over the weird sickness that I had. I don't know what was going on, but I definitely got sick because of Florida, and therefore I hate it at least 50% more than I already did. Hell yeah. Speaking about hating Florida 50% more than you already did, Jake Terrio. How's yeah, it going? I'm here. I'm here with the Galactic Empire's cards I've been using as bookmarks. I like this little crab. Oh, crab He's doctor? A doctor? Crab I doctor. Love crab doctor. Man, I was just looking at my Galactic Empire's cards. Earlier. I threw them at Ian's house right after you gave them to me. So no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they're like right over there. I sharpied all of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're great cards. I see, uh, I watch a streamer who does some magic stuff and I'll see artists and I'll be like, they did a Galactic Empires card. Ooh. Like, we'll get them out of here. No one wants magic. Get those Galactic Empires. Um, you know, I, um, this is local chat folks for you don't for those who don't know we talk about video games here we also have a little chit chat section at the very beginning that's to really ease everyone in and give kyle time to fill out his video games um <laughs> uh, my friend asked me a question the other day and it hurt me uh which is gentlemen if someone has a bumper sticker this is the example he gave me like honk if you love jesus honk if you love pizza all that sort of stuff in your own words, in whatever order you'd like to go to, what does that mean? You you honk if you concur. If I love okay. pizza, I would honk my horn as okay, I drove that's past. Jake's answer. <laughs> Kyle. Um, I mean, I think it's more like I'm never going to honk for Correct. one of those. Just just because like you're on the road. It's like when when a radio station plays cop sirens. <laughs> where you're like, yeah. you're like, oh my god, like what's or like you're listening to a podcast and it's like there's cops or something like that, where it's like I'm already paying attention to something or you know, trying to pay attention to something with a hundred percent of my attention span. Like I don't need anything else to distract myself or anyone else to think that I'm angry at them or something. Because my default my, I mean, I'm from Jersey, so if anyone honks at me, my default thinking is fuck you, you're <laughs> doing something wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I don't I don't honk. So. Okay, so uh, supposedly now this is I uh, there's no doctor to back this up, but supposedly the honk if you love Jesus honk if you love pizza is the thing like you're a bad driver people are gonna honk at you, but in your head you're like oh this guy really loves pizza because he's honking at me and my bumper sticker says honk if you like pizza, that's like the point it's of like those a styles of it's a, it's a personal deflection. Yeah, so if, honk if you love Jesus. Man, this guy's really honking at me. He must really love Jesus, not that I'm sitting in the, the left lane uh, going slow or something like that. And supposedly, if you think it means honk if you like pizza, uh, it's an autism test, uh, which is fantastic. <laughs> because uh, now that Jake has also failed it, I failed it as well. Um, Kyle went off, so I just think you have ADHD. <laughs> Um, I, well, about no, I mean, <laughs> wait, so what was what was the original question? It it's was just what do you think it means? Like, oh, what is I was that saying, bumper like, mean? I, no, you must you're... have misheard you. I thought I thought you said what like, what do you do when you see one? Uh, and yeah. I was just like, I don't do anything. <laughs> so. Listen, at least you don't have autism. Uh, we've officially I figured out. I probably do. I probably do on kidding. some level. I just no. my like friend I'm from New Jersey. Uh, uh, well, you know, um, George asked me that question when I was at Sip Studios helping him out, um, I should point out. And he asked me that, and I gave that answer. He said, yeah, it's an autism test. That means you have autism. And I just immediately went, oh, like, why'd you do that to me for? I was so excited to give my answer. I was like, yeah, hey, you honk if you love Jesus. Uh, listen, that's however, that's how I'll interpret it for the rest of my life. So, uh I have a question. I need to look this up because it doesn't. I don't think it feels like. I don't think it's a real someone autism just test. Came up with. I yeah. think it's just a me a thing he saw on Instagram five minutes before I got to his office and he used it on me. Jake, you're Understood. holding your hand up. What do you want? I don't. I don't know if it'll be on camera, so I don't know if our viewers can see. But Kyle, do you have like an industrial sized fan in your room? <laughs> 
It's a cat wheel. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I was picturing a little oh, huge oh, band. You can get it like wide open. <laughs> I have been wanting to ask Kyle about that for like weeks because I saw why, it a couple times. Why didn't you? And no, I no, but understand. it was angled differently. And I was like, what? Uh, folks at home, I'm sorry, you can't see it. So I'll move Kyle over for a second. You can see it now, the cat yeah. wheel. So at first I was like, Oh, it looked like a it looked like a box or something, and then it was there again, but you couldn't see like the inner ring. <laughs> so I was like, maybe it's just like a like a like an oxygen machine or something, and like I or like air conditioning. And I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> and then, there it is. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I was just like, I don't. Know, maybe Kyle's AC is out. He had to <laughs> get know. a huge fan to stay cool at his desk. And then it's so funny because the last the last time Kyle was on, I finally saw Mochi running on it, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. it might have been a fire emblem, actually, a fire emblem." When I saw it, and I was like, "That's what it is." And then I never asked you because I figured it out in a span of like two streams. But I'm so happy you asked because <laughs> I was never you 100%. Didn't, you didn't for so for weeks, you just were like, I'm not going to ask about it. If I see one thing different about anyone's, I'm like, oh, what is that? Like, you know, what's going on? I, it's because I only thought about it when I see your ninja because it's it's oh, nine yeah, by yeah, 16. Yeah. And when I load it in and then I think to ask you and then I just don't because I forget things the instant I think well, to do them. If you're not so looking I, at the wall, it's not real. Yeah. I don't think you can see it, but my it's it's in darkness right here. But the entrance to my apartment is like uh, it, I live on the second floor apartment. I would put it right near the the stairwell. There's like a an opening, but that's where I have my bike. So like yeah. I don't want to have my bike back there. It's just it it's weird. So I just <laughs> leave it there. No, he doesn't even <laughs> use it. It was like three hundred dollars, and he's like. He was into it for about 20 minutes and then he's just like whatever like i don't care so i should just throw it out at this point but i just keep going around what's happening <laughs> i don't know why your cats are the sports maker but i mean now. he is he's he, i mean you're close he's got the hitler stash so it's like around the True. same area, but, austrian you know watch out don't bring one <laughs> to europe over there. he also, also did not go to art school so i don't know if he applied but oh, we can see uh, how he is a painting <laughs> Um, folks, that's, that's like, thus concludes the chit chat section. And now for something completely different, folks. We've been playing video games this week. I've been stuffing them just inside me. I, I see a video game, stuff it inside me. I've just been doing that great. all week. It's been great. It's how we do it. I have double D's, Dragon's Dogma. I'm still playing. I think I probably, I probably put in like an hour. What is wrong with me? Like five to ten hours this week um it's still a fantastic game i'm just mopping up a bunch of quests there were a few that like never triggered for me or i wasn't around like stuff's finicky you you can talk to every npc some of them give you like the you just get like little subtitles and then some give well give you big subtitles and you can a next through them versus the other ones are kind of just you can just walk away from the person what are you what are you playing on uh i'm on the xbox series x Okay. Um, it's run actually the latest patch. I feel like made it run worse, uh, and I don't. <laughs> That's what Digital Foundry was saying. They're like uh, it made almost zero difference. So. I I was just like this game has run perfectly on the Xbox. I, I've noticed it get framey because of the people say it's because of the NPCs in the build in the in the places. Um, it's gotten framey. It's it's definitely gone above thirty. Um, and uh, like it's been fine with me. And then this latest update update when i walked into like a place that never given me issue it was starting to get framey in in a way like the game was like shutting down not like oh there's like we can't handle this which was scary but suffice to say uh game's still fantastic it's still arbitrary and weird uh i i really enjoy playing it uh i think i have like six more quests but i'm kind of tired um, so I think I might just go finish the game and do a new game plus and then just like leave it there for the next time I come back to it. Um, I did do a quest today where one of my pawns was like actually two quests. I did one quest that I finished and one of the pawns with me who I had hired was like, oh, with my master, we let we let so and so die. It's a good thing I can tell him that he lives in this universe, which is like wild and crazy because that's i mean that's how dragon's dogs work 
Dragon's Dogma works. It's it's a multiverse game, so each player's version of it is their own little universe of it. And then I completed another quest like an hour later, and my pawn was like, oh, I wonder if there was um, another way to do that. And the other pawn was like something along the lines of like, yeah, my master had a different outcome. And I was like, oh, I really should, if I do a new game plus, try to like finagle these another way and wait a little bit for people to figure out exactly how these quests like go together um because i've seen so, guides that say one thing and i see guides that say the other so quick quick question how do like as far as the pawns you can have three right yes. three at one at one time can they all be other people's pawns from other universes or no so you always have your main pawn um okay who you design uh and breathe life into uh you give them your rib uh no that's not true uh but you design them and all that uh you can change their vocation whenever uh the only thing they just can't be the vocations that are arisen only but yeah you're free to change that you can assign them quests they can get hired out they never leave your game but they get hired out to other people and then they return bring you presents all that sort of stuff and then the other two pawns (laughs) you hire are other people's pawns um, what was what was the one you made that you were getting community feedback from? Oh, slug, slug, slug. <laughs> oh. I like turned my <laughs> Xbox on because I was with Karen. I was we we're trying to figure out what to play. Oh, I need to I need to write that down. Sorry, uh, someone remind me of Splinter Cell after this. Um, I uh, I just saw I had an Xbox message, and most of the time it's like finish your your Game Pass quests and you can get a five dollar. <laughs> guy thing or like hey we've uh, we've updated the xbox it's like from a month ago so i looked at it and uh i uh and i just had a message from someone and i was like okay maybe it's spam and it just said slug is my man and it was like in all (laughs) caps and i was like thank you random person who took on slug and felt the need to message me over xbox live to tell me how my hideous son uh, with the deepest voice God <laughs> allows, uh, and the, just the ugliest face, um, gave him pleasure <laughs> in life. Um, I was yeah. so mad. I made uh, another guy named Strong Timothy, who was incredible. Uh, is very strong, um, but I accidentally made him in the main character creator, so I didn't get to pull him over. But you know, I'm happy with Slug. He's not the best, but he is there. So, uh, mm. so I'm glad he can be there with me. Um, other games I played this week, uh, Felvedic, Felvedic. This is a game Jake and I pretty much saw at the exact same time. I, I think <gasps> I went to post it in the Discord, or at least thought about it, and then you posted it. It is like a, I, I don't know if this is true, but it feels like it was built in RPG Maker, um, because menus pop up just like RPG Maker, but it doesn't, it has some 3D and stuff. It, anyways, it's a weird jrpg turn-based game stuffed into a medieval europe polish setting uh you wake up drunk and you look out the window and the castle next door or like down the field is on fire and then your lord is like yelling at you but he always wants to play games with you so he's like go check out that castle but are you sure you don't want to play cards with me and then like i came back to him later and he's like are you sure you don't want to play uh oh what's it called it's it's sorry but it, it it's the original name for sorry, whatever that is. Apologies. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's a good that joke. That was good. That was that's good. That's very good, Jake. Um Thanks. anyways, uh so and then my wife is working with cultists, uh and all this sort of stuff. Cheesy. Yeah. Parcheesy. <laughs> Sorry, that a uh, parcheesy, yes. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Yeah. Um anyways, it's weird and fun. Uh, it's got uh, these great mechanics uh, for the turn-based combat where you're just like, you can guard, you can attack, but it's got these fantastic, like almost rotoscoped animations of like the sword slashing, you popping open a bottle to drink, to heal up, um, doing like blessings, doing guards. Um, I've encountered some uh, uh, fantastical enemies, uh, which is an element in this game I wasn't exactly expecting. Uh, going into it but uh it's been weird the writing's been funny uh it's just like you gotta look it up it's felvidek deck f-e-l-v-i-d-e-k uh on steam it was i think eleven dollars or nine dollars 
was one of those. Uh, and it's fun. It's weird. Go check it out. I don't know how else somewhere to between it. nine and eleven. Somewhere between nine and eleven. Um, I also played Return to Grace. I've uh, seen this one on Game Pass, so I'm interested to. Yes, hear you this talk is a about Jake it. game. Go play it, Jake. Um, it's very much in the vein of like Tacoma and um, the one where you're with the AI on that spaceship and the other one on the space station and then the one uh, you're, Deliver Us the Moon about Tacoma again. and Deliver Us Pray? the Mars. And um, no, there's the other one on the space sh- station where they're, you're like locked in a space anyways it's a oh, observation it's a observation Where you are the you. ai yeah. yes, yes that one was that's good. what i'm thinking of that one's great i think i like that one anyways uh it's one of those uh you were uh on ganymede you're an archaeologist mm-hmm. in the year like 3400 and something there was an installation on ganymede and it's been silent for 900 years uh and when it went silent it kind of ended the golden age of space exploration and you have come to this planet with your AI buddy, Alan. Uh, and uh, that's where the game starts. Uh, it is short. It's about two hours. I'm not going to tell you much about it other than it does some great world building really quickly. It does some great discovery of that world building really quickly. Uh, and I think it ended on a pretty good note. There were a couple other endings uh, I didn't get. I got one of the endings. Uh, so I'll be interested to see if anyone plays it, what they get. It's free on Game Pass. Return to Grace, like I said, it, I went through it at a leisurely pace, and I think it was almost exactly two hours. Uh, it it, nail, it, it kind of nailed what it was going for. Uh, it was fun. The writing writing was okay, okay but the uh, voice acting was great. There's like 10 different characters. Um, you meet uh, another AI, but only one of their systems is on, and as you turn on the other systems you get a second system and then you're like, Oh, Hey, AI combine those two systems to make a third system. Uh, so like put empathy and, and control together and let's see what it makes. And they have different voices for each one of those personalities. Uh, and it kind of becomes a fun little, like whose advice like the, are you following? The inverse of that taxi cab from cyberpunk. <laughs> yes, exactly. Delamine. Delamaine. Delamaine. I wanted to say Charlemagne. I knew that wasn't right, but I knew it was close. <laughs> it's Charlemagne. <laughs> Um, it, it was fun. Uh, Return to Grace. Uh, like I said, Game Pass. It's a Jake game sci-fi. If you like hi, uh, high sci-fi, kind of what it was. I'm definitely. I keep every time I scroll past it, I look at the like the screenshots, and I'm like, hmm, maybe. But now, yeah, I definitely will. It kind of visually is giving me. It it looks like um the Invincible, which Jake, I yep. know you had talked about. Have you played I it? I still before? need to play it. I want it. Well, because I wanted it's, to read the book before I played the game, and I still haven't yeah. read the book. <laughs> It's, but it's on my it's on my wish list and it's very positive on Steam, but uh it's also thirty dollars and this one you're talking about is only fifteen. Well, it, so and it's free on Game Pass, I will say. Isn't the Invincible coming to Game Pass? I don't know. I, I don't know. I wanna say I saw that, but I might be uh a liar. I might be a liar. Uh and then um finally I I won't go too much into this because we know how I talk. Um, but I played a game and the reason I know this game is good folks is because it's not even sold on steam. Um, it is called it's star sector. Game. Uh, it's on the chain. It's on the blockchain. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, it is basically the best way I can describe it is mount and blade in space. Uh, you are a character, uh, and you are just like mountain blade. You are your character, but then you are slowly amassing an army. So in this game, you're slowly amassing a fleet of ships. And you're flying around these different, this whole galaxy. Uh, I'm still in like the tutorial area. I forgot to save at one point and I died and I'm really far back into the tutorial again. So I kind of put it down for a little bit because I was angry. Um, but uh, I, I charted a course to this planet. I can turn on like a sustained burn to get there faster. But when you go through an asteroid belt, I have to make sure to slow down so stuff doesn't hit uh, my ships. I have to make sure to keep my transponder beacon on in certain uh, reaches of space because the government wants to know that who's in their spaces but if i'm creeping up on pirates i can like hide in asteroid belts and make my ships go dark and then like surprise them uh and then when you get into the fleet battles uh you are you can kind of mountain blade it where you're uh, telling the different troops what to do but you can also assume control of a ship 
Uh, and when that ship uh, blows up or you switch to another ship, your little shuttle pops out of one ship and flies over to the other one. Uh, it's very cute. The The interactions so far, it's all like text-based. You go to a planet, you talk to people, repair your ships, upgrade ships. Um, it seems to have a lot of uh, features and stuff I haven't really gotten into. I probably played about two hours of it. Uh, Star Sector, it is available on their website for $15. It's in early access, and that covers you through uh, release and all that sort of stuff, so you own a copy of the game. They said they're going to be raising the price when it goes uh out full uh but uh it's fun it's cool it's got uh i don't know something about just being a guy in space and it's 2d and i can just fly around and figure that all out uh seems like fun it also has a rad combat system with like the right type of lasers to take down shields and overloading ships and you have <laughs> this like flux buildup that you can like disperse out like quickly to like get your weapons back online uh, kind of seems like FTL a bit cross with that. I'm not going was, too deep into it. I was literally going to say it looked like FTL. It, yeah. yeah, it's fun. It looks cool. Uh, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, Jake Terrio. Well, you want to talk about Splinter Cell? Oh, thank you, you sweet boys. And I saw Kyle reminding me in Discord as well uh, because I <laughs> glanced at that when I saw the orange and I went, "Oh God, is something wrong?" And then I just read Splinter Cell. <laughs> Um, yeah. Karen and I started playing Splinter Cell Conviction co-op, um, mm. which I didn't know was a thing, uh, on the, the old Xbox because Conviction came to Game Pass. I don't know if it was recently or I just missed it because I said to myself, I should just play through the main game, but, uh, we've been playing the co-op campaign and <laughs> I, you know, it's a stealth game, but it's a heck of a lot of. It's There's an like, action game. <laughs> there was not much of a tutorial in the co-op campaign, so it was a lot of Karen and I hitting the wrong button, falling in front of the enemies, and just spamming the shoot button to shoot everybody. Um, well, by the end the of whole, like, the whole go. thing is the tagging system in that. I love I love Splinter Cell Conviction, um, but the whole thing is like you tag the enemies, and then once you've like killed one person with a stealth thing, you unlock the like triple or quadruple insta kill thing that's like Ooh. he's like he's like choo, choo, choo. he like turns his gun at like impossible angles and headshots yeah. everyone but like you're supposed to be able to do that for like eight people in co-op and i th i think this i don't mean to take over this conversation i think i did the co-op campaign of that by myself where i had like two controllers and i was just doing everything <laughs> myself it was pretty cool um, but yeah sorry yeah you, you it's neat. Um, we're always looking for more co-op games to play. We we start a lot of co-op games and then we don't finish them uh, because we kind of get bored of them. Um, so we started this. We might play a little bit more of it. I need to go see. There must be a separate tutorial that I missed because it's not in the main chunk of it, but maybe there is one. It, um, just, just remember that tagging guys is like the important thing. So anytime you tag the people and they walk within your line of sight, you can like shoot them like insta kill them basically so and the I didn't way even to know do there it was tagging that's yeah that's how crazy she climbed a wall once or i climbed a wall and she was like how did you do that and i said i have no idea karen <laughs> i'm just i'm saying i'm same same we're here together um so uh it was interesting that's the splinter cell thing i want to mention because i know kyle loves splinter cell and if i don't I mention do. it i'll get an angry worded comment from kyle on his alt account <laughs> talking about how trump's coming back I already I already <laughs> sent you an angry comment. It was, I, it was Splinter Cell in all caps. That's how you knew yeah, it was he angry. Just does that. It's, it's wild. <laughs> help, help, folks. Um, yeah. well, this is not a this is not a joke. That's not a cat wheel. It's a wheel of Splinter Cell hate. Um, it's actually Elon's new air conditioner or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, Jake, please tell me. I only care about one of these games, but you can talk okay. about all of them. Which one do you care about? We'll have to find I'll out. I'll do that one last. Okay. <laughs> um, still playing Bellatro or Bellatro, as I've heard some people say it. I don't. I said there Bellatro a for a while. Right? Yeah, or Bal so. I don't know. Bellatro. I've not unlocked all the decks yet. I think I still have like two or three I need to unlock. Um, and I'm still unlocking, I think, some of the, the rare and the legendary jokers. Um, but that game rules. It's just so effortlessly fun to play. It's like um, video game cocaine. Mm -hmm. I I've heard so many, and you guys have talked about it like 
incessantly to the point where it's like, I really should get this. Not in a bad way, just like I, I hear about it all the time. <laughs> And I'm waiting for it to come out on like iOS because I feel like mm -hmm. it's it it's will like be the, the game the like the game to play on my phone. And I hate mobile gaming, but like I would play a card game on my phone. But uh, I don't know what they did. You well, had they to, did if, announce it, right? I I think they did announce. It. I think I heard that. But if you had yeah. to like distill what makes it so addictive, what is it for you? Like like what is the hook? I mean. It just yeah, has you guys a, were not prepared really for this game. gambling. <laughs> no, no, it has really good game feel. Like it just feels yeah. really good to play. All it's right. simple. It's easy to understand, and it's just it feels really good. Okay. Yeah, you can. Right. And, and I want also want to say it makes you feel smart in a way of like I feel like you understand the game enough to be like like like. When you hear someone like min maxing a game, you're like, oh, they know that game super well. Like Bellatro out the gate feels like you could almost be like, oh, I had got this Joker. I think I could. I feel how I could min max this exact situation, like mm -hmm. with this Joker. And and it's almost like the Jokers are your quests for that run of the game yeah. because yeah. you get a Joker that's like your your two of a kind is always times 10 multiplier you're gonna keep playing two of the kinds and explore the two of the kind route of that game uh and yeah. i think uh that's the other thing it kind of it doesn't dumb it down it just makes you kind of feel smart in a in a sense mm -hmm. uh, so it's like yeah. me with putt putt yeah when you when you yeah, find the putt -putt. Right combo, it, you you are like oh i've cracked it you see, <laughs> you see the matrix line well that actually kind of feels like like one. Mix, mixalumia where it's like uh -huh. when, when like because like i watched you play it and i was like i get it but like i don't get it and it's not until you spend like a couple hours that you finally like mm -hmm. it clicks so like i kind of i, I, I kind of get it yeah 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 all right um then additionally i you know i keep playing on and off lego 2k drive in preparation for doing a, a one-year review in next month they finally added a fourth biome uh for um snow and um it took, i feel like it took them a while because the whole map was like center tutorial zone and then it had three zones in the corner of this square and just one big area that was just empty for months and months and months and i'm like they they have to add something to this they what can't were the other it. biomes it there's a desert there's like a old west deserty one or not even old west it's got like old west uh like and but they just got like an area 51 section and it's got like kind of just deserty stuff and then it's got like a uh prospector valley like mountainous kind of area and then a haunted zone that's just like halloweeny spooky stuff um and then this ice environment um and that's all i will say on that because i have lots of thoughts in a script that is great it's ballooning in size with each <laughs> passing day um on that note though I, I played hot wheels unleashed 2 because it's on game pass um and i'm having a lot of fun with it i actually feel like they took some design inspo from 2k drive because it has a dedicated jump button now for like Ooh. avoiding obstacles um but i feel like the driving on the whole feels better in uh um hot wheels unleashed or the drifting i don't know about that the drifting feels better in hot wheels unleashed i think maybe holistically 2k drive with the drift and the boost and the jump you can do some fun kind of traversal combos with that um but this is going to be then my semi-controversial take oh. i want the hot wheels unleashed developers to get the pod racing license oh. i was i was playing it and at some point like an hour into it the thought came into my mind that i'm like this feels like like i can if i closed my eyes i could picture it being a pod racing game um and suddenly i was like i know i think uh previous wishlist spotlight reclaim interactives uh death grip the legally distinct pod racing game that's in early <laughs> access right now um, I played the demo. You can get the demo on Steam, um, and it was it was fun, and it felt good. But then I still was like, 
I, I don't know if I'm just like, you know, if maybe a purist or whatever, but I want the the Star Wars veneer yeah. on top of it. Shellac. Um, and um, I think I was playing Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, and I was like, I really want this to be a pod racing game. Like, if I knew anything about modding, this would be a mod that I would be trying to make. Um, mm. And uh, I'll keep playing it. It's got a ton of dumb microtransaction stuff in it, um, as did the first game. But it feels good to play, and they do. They're, they're pretty handsy outy with the rewards, so you can still get cars fairly easily mm. um you, it's not like it's all locked behind a paywall there's still a lot of interesting stuff within the or before the paywall um yeah fun having a fun time it's on game pass if you have a game pass check it out and then i've been playing dredge in uh, research for yet another subpixel video and i bought the dlc the frozen north or freezy 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 water snowy yeah whatever the dlc is called i haven't gotten i started a fresh save so i haven't gotten to any of the dlc stuff yet but um that's another game that just also feels pretty good just to go hang out and luxuriate and catch some fish uh and then get hunted down by a monstrous uh eldritch horror if you're not being careful i think they also added some like ambient wildlife because uh, i don't know if how much of the game either of you remember but when you traverse like the big open ocean sections between clumps of islands um sometimes you'd see like some big thing under the water um or maybe like a dolphin but there were definitely other there were like some dolphins that came up alongside me and then there were some killer whales and then a big blue whale which i didn't remember being in in the the base version of the game but it was a cool little moment i'm like ah oh, look at all these fish yeah. well the <laughs> whales are mammals they're not fish but look at these other look at all these other sea, fish. sea creatures sea creatures um yeah having a lot of fun with dredge i will keep going with it nice. those are the games i played I'm excited. I wanted to know about Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 because I saw it on Game oh, Pass. Right. I was going to install it, and I said, no, I'll wait for Jake to tell me about it. And lo and behold, you put it on your list. And I was like, calls them as, calls them as I see them. Um, <laughs> I think Le Lego 2K drives on... Uh, on uh, it is on Game, Game Pass, Pass now. now. So I was thinking... You should check it out. I don't know. Yeah, you think I, I think I'm going to go with that one because I assume there's more to do in Lego 2K drive versus... Yes, the 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 like campaign mode in Hot Wheels Unleashed is frankly somewhat bizarre. It I think it's called like like creature showdown or creature control or something. You load into it and the very first thing is like like a comic book panel animated cutscene of like a scientist a crazy scientist character being like I've accidentally created all these horrible monsters. You, the Hot Wheels drivers, have to use this shrink ray to shrink them down and defeat them. <laughs> and we have to clean up the town from the monsters. I'm like, this is the weirdest possible framing device <laughs> for this like it's called little no racing budget. game where you're where you're racing a bunch of cars through like uh your dad's garage, the backyard, <laughs> a 50s diner. Um, mm. and it's very weird. Um, but um fun. Yeah. Okay. Those I'll, are my thoughts. I, I, I think I'll check out 2K Drive now that's on Game Pass. Um, if enough of us get 2K Drive on Game Pass, I'd love to do like a multiplayer racing stream. That'd be fun. I'd multiplayer with you. Yeah, Although everybody can we, make a custom car. We did do Lego racing technically in Fortnite, and Ian was not having it. So mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think they let any of the Lego characters into Fortnite racing, but Project Fortnite Midnight Club Cars Grid <laughs> yeah. 2. You know, yeah. I thought not to suspend this even longer, but I was watching. Um, I I had this uh, over the weekend or over the week. When what is time anymore? When you're unemployed, <laughs> um, I was. I just opened up my YouTube and I said I'm gonna click on every fucking video, uh, because I'm so indecisive. I never click on YouTube videos because I can't. I just my hobby is browsing YouTube, um, <laughs> and so I clicked on them. And there were a lot of terrible YouTube videos out there. And with peace and love, with, with more views um, than ours. <laughs> yeah, uh, who need an editing class uh, or yeah. need 
okay, there's something wrong with YouTube in the sense of I clicked Where on one that was start? like, it was like the make best, a video about this? <laughs> yeah, it was like the best six space sims to play right now. And, and this is off at the heels of the other video I watched, which was like, Hey, there's some retro games. Like if you, if you like a genre, go back to like some earlier installments of it, like early Gran Turismo games and like, like, cause they're all racing games. You don't need the latest racing game to get a good racing game. If you like racing games, go try the ones for free or all that sort of stuff. And I was like, you know, that's a Jake's thing here. Reminded me of that. I was like, oh, I should go like Lego 2K drive. It's good to wait for a game to be technically free. I'm like, I could go check out Gran Turismo 4, whatever they said the good one was, or play the old burnouts. And then I click on this one video. So like Space Sims, I'm like, I remember liking Tachyon when I was growing up. And like, yeah, they made a shit ton of those Space Sim games around uh, Wing Commander and all that sort of stuff. And then there's some yeah. like, there's some Freelancer. newer ones that do stuff a lot better. Like Spaceborn Part 2 has full third person combat and you go to space stations and it's this giant galaxy and all this sort of stuff. And so I click on the video and it is sentence after sentence of hype to cut and then don't cut to the six games, just started another hype sentence again. So like, if you're really into space video games, then these six games are gonna give you the best impression of the galaxy out there. And if you really like being a commander of your own vessel and flying around, then these six games are really gonna blow your mind. What I like about these six games, and it was like five minutes of that before they got to the games, and I wanted to scream. Uh, was it was it an actual person? It was an it? actual person, and I was like, this person watches um the watch, watch like mojo. mojo and all that, and are like, I gotta hype it up for five minutes, which is the result of probably YouTube algorithm stuff where you want to keep the person on the hook for as long as possible. But they just took it as good editing, and I was just like, please, please just cut to a Jake with your hand raised. <laughs> Um, no, you just reminded me, this is totally <laughs> off topic, but when, we're there. when Hazel and I were on a cruise in uh, 2018, 2019, you watched a Watch Mojo video together. There was a dedicated channel on the TV in the room that was only Watch Mojo videos. Welcome to it Watch was Mojo. Crazy. Because it was wild. like six or seven channels that you could get on the cruise unless you paid for some, you know, crazy whatever. And one of them was just a dedicated watch mojo channel <laughs> they must have had a partnership with like that they cruise had line or something. it was well, it's, crazy it's like um it's like the tvs it's like those extra set of channels because there's like the like now on tvs there's like the video game channel where they play let's plays from like famous youtubers or there's the like the ign channel and all that it's like the subset of uh of uh tv channels um anyways that's my announcement to say i'm working on another youtube video I, we it's time for us jake does it kyle does it ian did it with pixel 8 uh we got to bring some semblance of health back to youtube get those view tickers up into the i mean goal high tens guys i think we can get there um, i think we can today's yeah. video is up to like 60 you know i watched that today jake you did a you did you did I don't know what this edit is called, but it's where it's a it's a more modern thing where you see um like the setup of a film shoot before they cut into the actual like guy talking. And you did the that with my uh cameo where you like had me setting it up and then cut to me set up. And I don't know what that's called, but I love that in videos. I don't know. It's um, like a documentary technique, but I'm gonna be yeah. real honest with you. If that was only because the the arrested development clip before that cut to like the cut to commercial card prior to my voiceover <laughs> ending, and so I needed See, something worked. to cover like three seconds. Damn, man! And here I thought you were you were intelligent, but you're just no, you're I just covering up your own well. mistakes. I was glad that it worked. But <laughs> yeah, that was because the just... arrested development clip didn't go long enough. <laughs> I love that Arrested Development clip too, because it's it's like the antithesis of everything, but also it it, it perfectly fits. Um, Jesus. Uh, anyways, uh, it's all to say the stream's brought to you by the Hollow Sun by Jake Terrio. Go pick up your copy uh, on Amazon. Uh, Kyle, uh, apologies for tangenting in, during Jake's section. Uh, please tell me care. about the games you've been playing this week, sir. 
I I didn't even want to be here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> did, Go run on your I treadmill. Did, I. I did actually want to be my treadmill. Your weird I wouldn't treadmill. Even, we know it's for you. I'd break that thing. So it's just for one leg. You can only do one leg at a time. You have to switch sides. You have to stand in the middle of the room, looking out the window, and just you know, like skateboarding on it. Um, no, that's my uh, my. It's my new the new version Ooh. of Wii Fit. Um, Hell yeah. No. Uh, so I played a game that has been in my Steam library for about five years <laughs> and uh i actually played it because i remember our lovely friend uh joanna talking about it when it came out and saying that it was one of her favorite games and i bought it because of her and then never played it because of me uh <laughs> and taking forever to play stuff but uh it was one of those things where i was scrolling through like oh what do i want to play what do i want to play this was like three days before i left for florida so i knew that i wasn't going to have any time or access to my pc so i needed something short and mm -hmm. i was like well i'll play what remains of edith finch which is a walking sim as you know the past you know what what was it like 2015 to 2019 was like the dawn of the walking sim critically think, yeah, acclaimed video firewatch game. was 2015 yeah which gone i home. love firewatch i will i will say and gone home yeah dear um esther. i don't actually dear esther um uh but what remains of edith finch uh is fantastic it is a wonderful wonderful tightly knit emotionally powerful and resonant story that unfolds uh, it's a mystery of this sort of weird i'm trying to remember what film it reminds me of but the house the the sort of weirdly structured house it's almost like a tim burton film or like it has that sort of mm -hmm. um who's the who's the, like who's the, the guy that did house. Well, it's kind of like the Weasley family. It's a little bit of James and the Giant Peach, yeah. uh, like like aesthetic. And then, oh, I think, um, oh, I just Nightmare had it. Before I can't Christmas? remember who it is. A little bit of Nightmare Before it's Christmas. Ray, where it's like, is it Ray Park? It's like, it that? starts That's out like a normal wall. house. And then, yeah, Ray Park. With the guy oh, it's doing, Dark Hall. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly like Ray Park. It's, Nick it's Park. actually based That's on his, his house. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's got this fairy tale aspect to it that is wonderful. If, if people who are listening or watching haven't played it, um, where you play, uh, uh, you play as a character, and there's a, a a a female voiceover who's like leading you through the story, uh, and it just unfolds in this really beautiful way that sort of draws you in almost instantaneously and it sets the tone and the atmosphere perfectly and it really just kind of it does that thing that i love with a really good story where it just fully envelops you and like i turned down like all the lights in my house and i like played it like in the dark because i wanted to be like fully in uh engaged in the story and it was it was fantastic i think i didn't love the ending as much as i wanted to but several of the stories of the different characters that you unravel the mystery of um there's no one else in the house it's just you but several of those stories went places and did things with gameplay that i was not expecting at all um to experience and i think that it it's one of those it's one of those games that really showcases like what a creative vision can do for a story and when that creative vision is implemented alongside different types of artists who are willing to try different things and styles and and gameplay bring in gameplay elements that maybe wouldn't normally mesh if a bigger studio was in charge of something and it just it has this really this really great like beating heart to it and i i really really enjoyed it and it stuck with me and i i understood after i finished it why it had it had been so lauded when it first came out so really glad i played it uh i think you can beat it in like two hours or like two two and a half hours something like that to do everything and then, of course, I'm such a completionist that, like, I went back and did. There's, like, three achievements you don't get uh, automatically that you have to, like, go back and do. So, like, I went back in and played them. And uh, it was great. It was a really good, a really good time. Uh, Annapurna Interactive, I think, is the the publisher. I think it was, like, their first big game. Yeah. And it's uh, Giant Sparrow is the developer. And they are working on... They have Edith Finch. And then they have another game called The Unfinished Swan uh which they, i have not played didn't they just but, show the uh, untitled goose game <laughs> yeah the untitled swan um no 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 uh this one is out on steam i think it's out 
Oh, dope. Yeah, it came out came out three years ago. So oh, it must have come out of? just know. after uh, Edith Finch. But yeah, it was great. I had a really good time with it. And uh, I love those guys and, and hope that they're doing more games like that. Uh, next game I played was just a little bit of the finals because uh, I do contract work for the company that makes that game. And uh, I just wanted to play it. And it was fine. It, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not i mean like i don't know it, it's hard it's one of those games where if you have two other people who you can actually talk to or who you know and can coordinate with it's amazing but if you're just in with two other randos it's not fun at all because none of you can coordinate and like it just was not it was would not you, a good time would you say if you streamed it you would make it more than 19 minutes oh i mean i played for like three hours when i played so okay. I, I, I it's just you got to play with you got to play with either people who were talkative or people that you're friends yeah. with. And and that makes the, the world of difference, which I would say for the most part is how I would want to play a competitive multiplayer shooter. Like I would not want to play Warzone without my friends because my friends are what make that game or those types of experiences more fun in my mind than playing with randos. Every once in a while you get you get away with playing with random people, but it's just it's more fun with friends. Um, yeah. just like drugs. So, um, the, I have two more, um, star Wars battlefront, the, I called it the fake mastered edition because it's got them. It's, it's not, um, our friends over at aspire media, uh, who I have said good things about in the past because they helped me out with KOTOR, uh, back in the day, but have since ruined their reputation over and over and over again with every subsequent release that they that they publish so uh not a good game if you're trying to play multiplayer i haven't touched it since it came out i actually refunded it on steam and i bought it on my switch because i was like oh this will be great to play in florida on my switch never touched it so <laughs> but it, i did play i did play the single player and i beat one of the campaigns and the single yeah. player is fine like it's like, great. It's great if you're just playing by yourself it's it's like it's fantastic it's exactly how i remember the old games being and it was difficult like the the geonosis level is like so stupid difficult yeah. like for no reason um but i had a really good time playing the single player and heard only horror stories about the multiplayer and was like i don't need to play that so uh i didn't and then the last game uh is minecraft which again i have not played in many 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 years but a lot uh, of new stuff in there yeah well uh i'm playing on the modded version the jo the java version or whatever it is i i i'm not gonna lie i don't like how complicated starting minecraft has become it used to be you had an exe file and you would double click it and it would just play and now it's like well there's five different versions of minecraft that you can play and you need to log in with your microsoft account but if you haven't migrated your old uh, Mojang account over to Microsoft by now it'll prompt you to like read it's like it's so stupidly confusing mm -hmm. now and thank you Microsoft but um once I got once I got into playing it was fun and um a, a friend of mine who I met from my work at uh Embark Studios is he's a little younger but he's he is very into Minecraft and he has propositioned me to say that we should do a Minecraft series again at some point um and he he just he he wants to see us play Minecraft. He actually joined Ooh. our community server. Um, it's low low floored. I oh, think. So I did see the low this floored. Is, this is About. me saying. This is me saying. I told him I would do this, so this is me doing <laughs> it. But we should play Minecraft at some point, and uh, he can show us all the crazy things that uh, he has learned that I have yet to learn. But those are my games. Sweet. I, it's funny. My brother was just texting me about Minecraft because uh, he wanted a new um, survival game to play because him and I will usually like get hung up on a survival game and like play it intensely for like two weeks and then stop. Uh, and sometimes Ian's part of that. So I was like, oh, we should maybe we play Minecraft again. And then he mentioned there's like a 35 gigabyte uh, file of uh, Southern Utah accurately accurately recreated in Minecraft, and I was like, okay. "Oh, we could put that up on a server." And then he told me his so he does is it like um, topography, or is it like the cities too? I think it's just like the can topography, you go to like, the like hiking yeah. and stuff. 
the center of of the Mormon faith. <laughs> the Mormon faith, the, <laughs> to the church. Um, to the fa- to Brandon Sanderson's house. Um, <laughs> That's where I want to go. We're going he, right um, there. He makes maps for a living. Does wood stuff. Uh, real girly crap. No, uh, he makes these. Actually, <laughs> it's not even girly. He, his it's maps are cool. amazing. They're like yeah, he makes amazing cool. maps. Uh, top side LLC, L, L, whatever on Instagram. Check him it's, out. Yeah. It's great. You know, it's, it's really cool. Where is it? I, I, I looked into being like, oh, I'd like to, you know, he's a friend and I want to support him. And then I looked at the prices and I was like, I can't afford to support you. So, yeah, this is an Iceland uh, that he made after we went to Iceland. Uh, yeah. Topsidemaps.com. He also made me a New Jersey, was- which just stinks. Like I trash. was very proud at your uh, wedding reception to recognize Masada. Um, you know? You you know? Like, I know what that is. <laughs> Did he you made, make it? Yeah, he yeah. made uh, Karen and I Masada, which is where I proposed to Karen. Herod's Palace mm. uh, in Israel, which is gorgeous <laughs> and very cool. Um, but anyways, uh, he uh, has some mapping software. He's like, I just realized I can import maps into Minecraft directly. And I was just like, my mind was racing and I was like, we should pick, we should have vote on like where in the world, like find out the grid size and like vote where we want the map of Minecraft to be. And mm, I was like, cool. would you do like Mount Everest? <clears throat> but no, cause it would be way too high up or like you do like North Korea. Uh, because map, cause just go right in there. Yeah. See what's in there. <laughs> um, I don't know. There were a bunch of weird. Stuff. The, DMZ. the DMZ, just the DMZ, <laughs> just the DMZ. <laughs> no, yeah. just the DMV down the street. The DMV. Uh, we'll do that there you one. Go. Uh, so, anyways, uh, that's my tangent about Minecraft. Um, yeah, I'm that's glad cool. you agree with me, Kyle. Star Wars Battlefront, fantastic, except for the multiplayer. Um, <laughs> one half of the game is great. <laughs> like yeah. the other half, don't touch. Uh, so let's move on to the news section now, Ian. Uh, for people who don't know. Uh, as the fourth member subpixel he pops in occasionally um but he uh he usually does the news and it's an unspoken thing but basically he does the news and then i don't read the news because he just presents the news um ever since we all just i no longer work at a gaming journalism website i do not pay attention to video game news anymore it's freeing it's amazing (laughs) people tell me about things now it's great um, so, uh, I had to read through all these news stories, uh, and it sucked. So, uh, let's try to not have Ian not be here, um, is all I'm going to say. Folks, uh, do you want ads in your discord? No. I mean, I, it was my birthday wish and I just can't believe it came true. So. I know. And Jake said the wrong it's answer, Kyle's which is fault. crazy. <laughs> it's um, my fault. Yeah, I want, uh, we're going to put ads in Discord, everybody, because fuck everyone. Um, No, this is basically um, Discord's decision to adopt ads. uh, uh, God, where the, I just had it. How many websites are there that don't have ads at this point? Is Is there no safe haven? Isn't it just when you're streaming? Like when you're doing video or is it in like pop-up ads in so chat? It's, okay, here. Sorry, I accidentally scrolled. The platform revealed plans to launch sponsored quests, which allows users to earn in-game items by completing quests while... What? Jesus. While friends watch on Discord. So Wall Street Journal reports oh, so claims like- that the program will roll out within a week, after which paid promotions will one. become permanent part of the platform, appearing in the bottom left of users' screens... To earn I have one users for the must... finals. It's like oh, Twitch wow. drops, kind of? Yeah. So kind str- of, yeah. Oh, they're streaming, completing in-game tasks while, from advertisers while at least one friend is watching. So it's all streaming within Discord. I mean, listen, I there's a lot of forms of advertisement. This form isn't the one that hurts me to my soul, like banner ads on websites. So I can at least forgive this. Teen layers of banner ads. Yeah, especially this like is a very specific scenario of streaming with a bunch of my friends, uh, which a I don't stream with my friends, and b I don't have friends. So there you go. Sh- shit on you, Discord. Um, you know it sucks to see our programs invaded with. Uh, oh, Kyle, you do have an ad there. 
it's so wild. if you when you hover over it that's what comes up but if you let it go it's just the top oh. uh it's it basically like slides down and it's just a tiny nothing. little colored thing honestly i'm surprised <clears throat> it's discord has lasted this long without heinous ads in it um because nothing pure yeah. lasts forever and i feel like discord has lasted too long uh and we're gonna lose out on it and i'm that... waiting for the day when we have to like watch a 20 second ad before we hop into before, a video call like this <laughs> before we can start streaming yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, what about uh ninja is gonna like eventually become that or something like that i don't know i was gonna say it'll be an arms race like it'll be like oh you posted that news story not because i saw it 20 seconds later but because i had to wait for the ad to on the channel to post it and it now lets me type once the ad finishes playing um which is a, a huge nightmare to me we truly um, live in the worst era of the internet. <laughs> we really yeah. do. And somehow the best era um, mm. of humanity. The Certainly but, the fastest era. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, moving on. Uh, so there's two stories here, and it confuses me. This one is Dead Cells developer to release a new Prince of Persia game in Steam Early Access, which is from Insider Gaming. But we also have a story from one poly, uh, PC gamer, yeah, PC gamer, uh, that says the new roguelite from the developers of Dead Cells has one big goal, matching the intensity of Japanese action games like Devil May Cry, uh, and they d look like complete two different games. So, is the Dead Cells developer coming out with two games? Well, that is my question. I don't I know. I'm very confused. Didn't we just release? We a just Prince got a Prince of Persia, Prince of Persia game? game. Is that there another the, one? The third one is there was just a Prince of Persia game that came out in the style of a Metroidvania like Dead Souls. The, this Dead the Cells. picture the picture is of the recent Prince of Persia though. So now I'm even more confused. Yeah, so that's the recent one. And then this one is some roguelike one called the Rogue Prince of Persia. Uh which is coming. Uh, Cormac out. McCarthy's The Road Prince of Persia. The Road of Persia. <laughs> The Road to Persia? I don't know. Okay, so this is... I'm very uh, confused. On February 9th, Motion Twin, the developer of Dead Cells, said that they're done creating content for Dead Cells and Evil Empire, the studio responsible for all their post-launch support of the game, uh, would also be moving on to uh, other projects. So maybe this is... Well, now i got to read this other one. And this says, when Dead Cells developer Motion Twin started working on its next game, the plan wasn't to make a roguelite. What is happening? There's two different video games. Super Jack. Okay. Maybe it's not this one. Sorry, I'm trying to read this article because I I was like, why are there two different articles saying Motion Twins coming out with a game? So maybe they're coming out with two games, but I'm too... Uh... We're live, folks. We can't look up things live. <laughs> we'll come back and issue a retraction yeah, what if Will has lied to you at yeah. any point during the yeah, stream. For sure. Uh, but good on, I mean, good on Motion Twin for getting games out there. Uh, sorry, just came it came across my desk, folks, and you know what? Sometimes you gotta push it right into the shredder and not say anything about it. Uh, definitely not. Um, okay, here's kind of the media story of the night that I want to hit before we gotta get out of here. All this other shit is kind of stupid and dumb, but uh, Next Lander was talking about this, who's pretty much the only news video game podcast I listen to. Uh, which is uh, this company, New Zoo, did a study that they says 60% of playtime... I was just going to say, did they buy a zoo? <laughs> yeah, they bought a zoo. 60% uh, of playtime in 2023 went to six-year-old or older games. Oh, uh, yes. I remember hearing about this. Um, did not so, surprise me one bit. Yeah, nope, I just didn't same. know six-year-olds were making games, but good for them uh, <laughs> that they're doing that and getting out there. Pretty good. For their parents. Um, so this is the Kotaku article, uh, that, uh, first drew attention to this. Uh, and so they come up with this, uh, there's this slide here that's games ranking on the top 10 average MAU over seven years. Uh, MAU meaning a thing that they don't say here. Um, what does MAU? Oh, wait, here we go. Monthly active users. So this is, uh, ranked by their average number of monthly active, active users. Um, and they took, uh, they look at multiple platforms. 
I like when I go to make this image bigger, it doesn't get bigger. <laughs> it just gets smaller. Um, so on PC, uh, across the board, PC, PlayStation, uh, Xbox, and Switch, number one was, of course, Fortnite, uh, the mm-hmm. people's game, of course. Uh, number two uh, on PC, uh, so PC was uh, Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, Staples, uh, of, of gaming currently in 2024 still uh, The Sims 4 is also on there Counter-Strike 2 and Go Which they combine together um, Imagine I gotta imagine PUBG's up there somewhere uh, no, no PUBG on the PC I don't think so Call oh. of Duty, uh, League of Legends, Valorant Grand Theft Auto 5 and Rocket mm. League I don't think mm. that's a single Modern Warfare 2 and 3 And Warzone 2.0 is all sm- Smashed together so other than Counter Strike Two, that's the only. All these games didn't come out in 2023. Uh, the yeah. average years on the market for all of these games is 9.6 years. Uh, PlayStation is getting a little bit better. Their average is 7.4 years old. Uh, there, it looks like their most recent game would be EA Sports Football Club 24. Uh, but again, on there, there's the Minecraft, there's Rocket League, there's Roblox, Fortnite. Xbox, 7.2 years average. Same thing, Roblox, Minecraft, Fortnite, Grand Theft Auto V, Rainbow Six Siege. Now, Switch, give Nintendo uh, the good goods here. Their average years on the market is 3.9 years, which is pretty good. That is half, that's a third of PC and half of the other two. Um, Fortnite, Fortnite, Minecraft, and Fall Guys is the only ones that are really in common with the other ones. Number two, Tears of the Kingdom. Three, Wonder. Both came out last year. Mario Kart 8. It'll always be there. Scarlet Violet. Deluxe. Uh, New Horizons. Surprisingly, Hogwarts Legacy. Um, on Switch? On Switch. <laughs> Switch. Yeah. That's I mean, crazy. think about it. It's wild. It must have sold a ton there. Uh, it, because it was it's a selling game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then crazy. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, so I, I think it's, it's cool to see this sort of trend of... I don't know if it's, we can argue this, but I don't know whether it's the trend of people don't want to play new games as much or are satisfied playing these older games and getting well, their money's think, worth of it. I think one of the key components here is like, obviously Fortnite being number one across all of them, Fortnite is no longer just a battle royale. It's a platform in itself, yeah, right? It's so they're Epic life. Epic is is iterating. I mean, for all the problems that people may have with Epic, and I certainly do, um, Fortnite is like because they fired the, our friend. The, the, yeah, they did. Um, the most updated game in the world. Like it it just like I'm not sure if that's true, but it feels like it, where it's like every week it's like, oh hey, we're introducing like this new big thing, and everyone tends to hear about it. You know, there's like a new like the the lego thing was like huge when they announced it um roblox is the same thing it's a platform to make games for people to play so there's always new content so like that kind of stuff makes sense same thing with minecraft where it's like i don't even really i know i just talked about it but like i don't even really think of minecraft as like a game anymore where it's like it's a place you go to like play around with mods or like just like to spend some time for a few hours where it's like, oh, this is like coming back to an old, I don't know, like something I used to do in college or something like it's it's like that. And um, I think that the fact that games like that, that are constantly just they they start out with a really big audience and just hold on to it really says something about not just the longevity of those types of games, but where a lot of those games as platforms are going. Mm -hmm. And I like I mean, I remember, and Jake, you'll get a kick out of this, but I remember hearing when Destiny first first came out that Bungie was like, it's a decade long experience. Like that's what they talked about, like a 10 year experience. And my thought with that was who would want to play that? And I was like, why would you want a game? Like I, I, I was thinking about it from, and I knew way less back then than I knew now and understood, I understand a lot more, but like, why would you want to be like just like betrothed to this this game and this system that's like not really ever going to change that much and like bungie in my opinion is still very much like it was at the beginning as far as like gameplay wise but at least with fortnite and roblox and minecraft to an extent you can have different types of experiences within those titles um 
I don't know. I I feel like it, and it's I don't know. Like like the stuff with like looking at like the Sims and everything. Like the Sims is huge, and the majority of their player base is women, which is like like just thinking about the different um, footholds that and and handholds that publishers can have. And Jake just disappeared. I guess you just weren't that interested, Jake. Sorry here for me. I started. Here? I I started slagging off uh, Bungie, and then no, you disappeared <laughs> from Ninja. For oh, me, you here did. Here for me. Me. Am I still oh, on stream? Here you are. Now you are. Now you are. <laughs> I, feel, for, I feel like for some reason you're like you guys are like playing with me. No, no I, I swear. <laughs> Kyle, you know gaslighting is not real, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I figured. No, I you trust don't even you. have trust diabetes. You guys. Yeah, I. Well, I mean, it's the insulin has just been a total placebo. That's just. It's just. It's all in your head. It's Kyle. just. Yeah. It's smelly. It's your water. body balancing out. <laughs> I feel like that's something we should do if one of us is just talking for way too long. <laughs> it's just like cause like a technical error and like we'll just I've stop got my talking. disconnect button. <laughs> um I, I will um, say yeah. yeah, you've got fantastic points, uh, but you're wrong. No. Uh fantastic points. I will okay. say the other thing I was gleaning off this is hey, if you're gonna make a game in 2025, 2026, don't make a live service game. Because you're not going to break into that. I can't believe, yeah. like, if I feel like that's, like, four out of every five games that get announced, though, are like, oh, yeah, it's going to be AAA live service. Like, yeah. Why? And, and it's one of those entire philosophy. What are you thinking? And I don't mean the loose term of live service now, which is, like, like saying Hell Hell Divers is a live service game. Like games with battle passes are no longer live service games. Battle passes are just part of everything. But like if you're out there being like, oh, I'm gonna make another Roblox or Fortnite, uh, I just I don't think you're gonna win. I and, and that's not to say there's gonna be another Roblox in Fortnite or Fall Guys any day now. Like the, it's gonna hit and we're all not gonna see it coming. Uh, and it's going to be crazy. And in 10 years, we're going to be like, I can't believe XYZ is still around. It really beat out Fortnite and all that sort of stuff. But that's a one in a million shot. And I wouldn't plan on that. I mean, look at the Switch. How, I mean, the exclusives and also single player games. Uh, but those, those even though they are, those live service games are all still in there other than Roblox. So like, I don't know. Um, it's It's crazy to me, but it also makes me happy. Uh, because I play a lot. I, literally the other day, I was like, I should just just play older games. Like, why am I paying for a new game? Like, other than friends are playing it, let me get in with the friends, or it's on Game Pass, or it's something I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, just go. I play older games. They're great. They still run great. They work. They run better, actually. Uh, yeah. Suffice to say. So I, I do that with TV shows. Like everybody has their comfort yeah. shows, right? You that you return to, and I honestly I've done that a bunch of times with Red Dead Two, where it's like it's been two years. I'm gonna play through Red Dead Redemption 2's story again because I love that story and I just Heck want to yeah. experience it. I did the same thing with like I have Community on Blu-ray because I like I just wanted oh. the physical copy, and like it's always on and off Netflix, and like every time I go to play it, it's like it's leaving Netflix, and I'm like I know. It always is. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a comfort thing for, I think, a lot of people. It's something familiar and, and fun. Yeah, I think it, it it people are so afraid of the word like dated. Uh, and like, I mean, I replayed or not replayed. I played through Ninja Gaiden one. You, you, uh, you scared Jake so bad with I that see, word. I no, I was I was bringing my hand up and I didn't realize what side of the arm I was on and I pushed the microphone really quickly towards my face. <laughs> oh, it's coming for you. Was, you got scared of dating. It's mm -hmm. okay. You know. Listen, folks, <laughs> don't be scared to play retro games. Um, is all I'm gonna say. What, uh, what were you saying, Nin Ninja Gaiden? Oh, no, I was just saying, Years. like, even I was playing through Ninja Gaiden, and I mean, yeah, it feels old, but, like, it's still a fantastic, fun experience. I'm I'm glad I played... Is it my favorite game of all time? No. Am I glad I played through Ninja Gaiden and, like, made it through some of those most difficult bosses I've ever fought in my fucking life? Yeah. I, I was fun. Uh, and 2 is a huge disappointment. Uh, but I'll get through it eventually. Um... That's pretty much it for the news. Uh, they're still working on the KOTOR uh, remake, so shut up about it. Um, Batman, uh, nope, Dwarf Fortress sold 800,000 copies. Those boys are millionaires. They deserve it. Um, because, I mean, those guys were funding that game through 
people's donations for years with huge medical problems. Like they had medical bills and all that sort of stuff. And now they're millionaires and it's crazy. Good for them. I wish I was a millionaire. Um, that's about it. I'm going to cancel you. Yeah, you would have to cancel me because I, you know, I could finally tell these. No, <laughs> Don't go woke. Kyle posting image proving that Jake was no longer there. The Jake, the Jake yeah, that's super uh, weird. Yeah, I don't believe you. I swear you, I stayed here the whole again. time. You did it twice. Yeah, he's oh, here no. for me. Maybe it's. Oh, no. Maybe you're infected. Maybe you're you you're back Florida. now. It was like, yeah. You're back. You've got Batman's my. Batman's on the screen, too. Look for the woke mind virus. Woke, yeah. <laughs> ah, damn. It's, um. <laughs> God, that, that's gonna. That's my new favorite thing is to just say everything's woke. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Gosh, those people infuriate me. Uh, <laughs> those people. Yeah, I mean it. Uh, <laughs> the woke mob, uh, folks. That's gonna be it for the news. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick wish list spotlight here. I, first, I was gonna say just go buy uh, Felvedek, which you should go buy Felvedek. But I forgot I saw this awesome game on Steam oh, yeah. or on Twitter called Screenbound. Uh, it is you. It is a first-person game, and you are holding in front of you a Game Boy looking at a 2D version of the game you are playing. So the 2D version like lets you jump and platform and stuff, and then the 3D version lets you see everything in 3D and go towards and away the screen down and around and below so you always like have this first person and second person view of the game uh while you're playing it uh it looks really fun uh this is put out by uh crescent moon games and those dang games uh that's pretty much all i know about it 2d platformer it's the q boy it's called uh, enter a unique world of screenbound where your quantum boy, the Q boy, transport you to a weird, weird dual dimensional space that occupies 5D. Um, yeah, I would go D. look this up on Steam it's called Screenbound. <laughs> Looks really neat, has a great visual style, and it kind of like stopped me when I was scrolling uh, Twitter because it's, it's just a very like, neat concept. I whoa. saw the GIF of it and was like, "Whoa, what's going on?" It. I immediately thought of I forget what YouTuber it was who put out a video about second person video games and how driver <laughs> san francisco driver is a second person because you are viewing it's a chase scene and you are viewing your car from the chase car while you're driving well, the, there's a uh, one of the james bond games that i've played for my james bond video is your first person in a car and then just on top of that is a top-down view of the map Oh yeah, and it's just, but it's like it's not like it's not laid out like traditional. It's so it's kind of like that, but this is obviously much more uh, well done. <laughs> no offense yeah. to those devs, but yeah. uh, it's neat and cool. Uh, I like when people play around with second person, and also just this concept is cool. Uh, mm. So go check it out. Uh, it's Screenbound on Steam, wishlist it, so they can get higher in the algorithm. Um, I'm, and that's gonna be. I'm looking, oh. I'm looking at the system requirements on Steam, and I think they messed up because it says for storage you only need two megabytes of space. That can't be and right. Then, and then the recommended storage is four megabytes of space. It's gotta be gigabytes. I think someone messed up it's here. Gotta be. Um. I don't remember what game it was, but I saw under system requirements, one of them said like blah 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 comma and a cat and i was just like <laughs> what system requirements is a cat we'll like, make your experience it. better <laughs> yeah gotta go get a cat um <laughs> folks that's gonna be the show um let me play the outro music and we can get the flip fuck out of here whoa okay folks uh if you like this beautiful content you can call your local crab doctor or go straight to stubpixelfilms.com where you can find all of our good, good content. Uh, go buy uh, uh, the hat uh, Kyle was showing up on Redbubble. Give us some money that way. Um, we'll be uh, here tomorrow. Nope, Saturday. Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll be Fired Emblem. I got to post that in the Discord. Uh, me, Jason, and Kyle will be there to play some Fire Emblem uh, 7. 
uh, and I'm gonna play through that some more. Uh, and then Tuesday might be more Fire Emblem or Wednesday might be more Fire Emblem. We're not sure yet. I always forget to ask them and Jake yells at me for the schedule. Uh, and then uh, Local Chat will be next week as well. Uh, we're gonna be spinning up some new shows here soon. So look forward to that. But we will see you all next week. <laughs>